हरे कृष्णा वेलकम बैक टू द महाभारत कैरेक्टर सीरीज वी आर डिस्कसिंग द कंक्लूडिंग पार्ट ऑफ द एपिक एंड ऑफ द एपिक्स एपिक बैटल एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग आल्सो द कंक्लूडिंग पार्ट ऑफ दुर्योधन सो ही इज हाइडिंग इन द लेक एंड द हंटर्स आर गोइंग टू इनफॉर्म यू दिस्टर द पांडवाज and their forces have been searching for durodhana everywhere they want to finish the war and they know that without durodhana's defeat and death the war will not end so when they are the pandavas after searching extensively and not finding him anywhere they have come back to their camp and when the hunters come and inform the guards that they have news about durodhana they are immediately ushered into the presence of yudhishthir and they tell how they overheard the conversation between uh, the three kaurava chandrals and durodhana who was inside the lake yudhishthir is pleased he rewards them profusely and then they immediately set off so the kaurava the pandavas are jubilant that they have overcome a uh, heavy almost insurmountable war, war, odds and they are now in the final stages of winning the war so uh, they come to the lake and they see that this lake has become completely motionless by the mystic power of duryodhana and at this point yudhishthir calls out oh duryodhana why are you hiding in a lake like this now and he says you have caused the death of uh, bishma drona karna and indeed millions of warriors after causing their death now for your own life how do you hide like a coward where is your honor come out and fight so duryodhana was inside the lake he was exa- he was enraged that he had been discovered he was wondering how it had happened but he accepted that it was somehow it fate that had ordained it and he was determined to he was himself undecided what to do he just could not stomach the fact that he who had been the ruler of the world was now practically a destitute with all his um with all his uh, friends and allies killed and with de- defeat and death staring him right now in the barrel so he uh as a staving tactic he said as a, a postponing delaying tactic he said oh you just said i am not afraid at all he says i am ready to fight with all of you but the war has exhausted me that is why i am resting in the school lake you should also rest and later on i will fight with you and i will crush your pride and defeat you although his for strength had been destroyed his arrogance was still there and it expressed itself at every opportunity yudhishthir laughed and he said oh duryodhana we have rested enough you also rested enough come now that you have sent all the warriors to the eternal rest you should not demand rest come and fight with us and then the other pandava was also and their warrior their warriors they challenged durodhana come out and fight how dare you hide like a coward and durodhana could not tolerate these insults and finally he spoke again trying another delaying tactic he said how you dishter i do not i am not afraid and i can crush all of you but seeing how all my friends all my loved ones bhishma drona and even karna have been killed and shakuni have been killed he says i have lost all desire for kingdom or opulence or life he said i give the kingdom to you uh take it uh vida take the earth which is desolate of its of your kinsmen of warriors and of wealth and rule it i shall wear deer skin and live the life of an ascetic now duryodhana oh, his arrogance was so great that now also he was trying to somehow find a high moral ground so he thought that i can look good in everyone's eyes by giving charity 
of the kingdom to the pandavas and let them at let them look attached let them look uh, uh, look sorry in the eyes of the world because they have killed everyone uh, and i give them the charity and i am detached and i will look superior so his thoughts and his, his, the sarcastic nature of his thoughts uh, came out in the sarcastic tone and that is not lost to yudhishthir and yudhishthir laughed he said oh duryodhana you did not you have no right to give the earth as charity to me the earth is not yours to give it was never yours it was stolen it was stolen away from us and moreover says it is not for, for me as a kshatriya to accept charity come out and fight and then looking at his brother so is smiling to see yudhishthir's belico spirit they, he said you know oh duryodhana why was it that when keshava came to you and asked you for five villages at that time you did not make this offer he said indeed at that time you were so arrogant that you said that you will not give an la- give land enough to we should tip of a needle through so now all this is just to show you have been defeated and the whole world will see how you are defeated and destroyed come out and fight and meet you the end that you deserve for having caused the death of millions and seeing that still dunyodhana the, 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 the realized he had been outwitted and he kept silent is the anger increasing and sensing that uh, angering him and uh, insulting him was the only way that he would come out of his cowardly shell the other pandavas started taunting him uh, denigrating him and uh, and adhurudana could tolerate it no more and then he said oh oh then again he tried another relaying tactic he, he knew that he, he was enraged but he still he was a obvious he was a realist in some ways and he spoke again to the story said you know that i uh, you have weapons and chariots and animals with you and i am alone and i am unarmed except for my mace yeah, duryodhana had fled he, had, he when he ran he put kept a chariot also behind so that it would not be detected and he had fled from there but his mace was like a part of his body itself you know, he had practiced and practiced long on a mace with his mace so that he had taken it with him and he said how can i fight with all of you in a fair fight i can defeat all of you one by one but i do not think it is right that i have to fight with all of you together without chariots and animals so uh, this should laugh and he said Oh Duryodhana how was it that you didn't remember this when you and all other mahamartas killed abhimanyu who was without chariot whose we- who who you dispossessed of weapons and armor and whom you attacked and killed but nonetheless he said i we will fight with you fairly come out and you will have a fair fight with us and for now duryodhana realized that he had no more excuses left and he emerged from the water and he just came out straight up the pandavas started cheering and they started embracing each other saying that now the war would end duryodhana was incensed uh, at their presumption that they would be victorious and he just came out of this maze and banged it on the earth it caused the earth seemed that like the earth would earth trembled as if in an earthquake and he said i will crush all of you he said as long as there is a fair fight uh, so he said i will fight with a mace and on the ground and let you, you decide who will fight with me so no, so before sorry before he spoke he said i will defeat all of you so Dur- the yudhishthir said at that time that oh duryodhana you can choose whichever weapon you want and whoever you want to fight with and uh, we will defeat it so this said uh, happened earlier and then duryodhana said i'll fight with my mace now when yudhishthir spoke this you can fight with whichever weapon and whichever opponent krishna looked at arjuna in concern he, he said what had come over yudhishthir you know, uh, it was well known all over the world that you that duryodhana had no match in mace fighting 
you know, Bhima was excellent, but Duryodhana was a better as far as skill was concerned in mace fighting, and Bhima was stronger, and so he had a chance that he might win, but still it would be a close fight. So Krishna and Arjuna exchanged concerned glances, which communicated a lot, and they said that it was basically a game. What had come on Yudhishthir now again? Just when they had won the war, Yudhishthir had practically staked the whole kingdom again on a single throw of a dice. Just he had, he had done 13 years ago. Now, there was no, dice was not there, but it was one match. And Yudhishthir said that if you defeat any one of us, we will accept you as the victor. So this was unnecessary magnanimity on the part of Yudhishthir. And Duryodhana came out, the water was dripping from his body and he glared at all the Pandavas. Bhima glared at him with unconcealed hatred. They both knew that the final fight would be between both of them. Now Duryodhana's arrogance was such that he could not accept a weaker opponent. You know, he, it, not only did he want to win, uh, throughout his life his goal was not just to gain the king, kingdom of the Pandavas. He wanted, he had a deep-rooted insecurity uh, which he wanted to replace by proving to the world that I am better than the Pandavas. So, when he, found, when he found that people were attracted to the Pandavas because of their virtue, uh, and he tried to, he was not virtuous, but he tried to create a pretense of being virtuous, of being charitable, of doing sacrifices. But when... People were not taken in by that. He tried to get more wealth, more power. He tried to dispossess the Pandavas of their power and wealth so that he would get the respect. And now when he was, when he had 11 Akshahunis as compared to the Pandavas, 7 Akshahunis, at that time he had thought, now just see, you know, by my strategies, by my cleverness, you know, I have got so many allies. This is proof that I am stronger than the Pandavas. I am better than the Pandavas. But he... Uh, and now he had seen, he, he just was not able to accept that. And his superiority had been uh, completely proven to be false. Uh, practically everybody on his side was dead. So he wanted to somehow or the other prove his superiority of the Pandavas in a way that would be, would proclaim his glory in the world. So that because of that, he... Could, he could have chosen the other Pandavas other than Bhima and he could have won against them easily. But he chose, he said, I will fight with Bhima and I will crush his pride. And Bhima looked at him. Bhima was eager to just pounce on him right now, smash him with his mace and destroy him. Now Bhima at this point did not know what had transpired the <coughs> on the morning of the 18th. So, actually, on that morning, Duryodhana uh, had been on his way after his morning bath to the uh, to the tent where Gandhari had been there. Now, Gandhari had heard on the... Uh, she had been hearing the narration from Sanjay, and while she had been hearing from him, she heard how Bhima was killing one by one by one all of her sons. So on the 17th morning, she decided that she must do something to protect her sons. And she started off and she came in chariot. By the time she reached, she heard that all her remaining sons, including Dushyasana, had been killed by Bhima. And she fainted at that time. And... Then she decided that she would use all her mystic powers to protect at least one son of hers. She knew Duryodhana was wicked and she had tried she had to get him to stop uh, fighting the war when Krishna had come as Shanti Dut. And she had also done atonements for the, uh, the grievous misdeeds that Duryodhana had done against Draupadi and the Pandavas, especially Draupadi. So she knew Duryodhana was wrong, but still it was her affection, the mother's affection. She was at least one son should live. So when Duryodhana saw that, he was to inform that his mother had come, and he went to offer her respects, he was disconsolate, devastated. 
at the way the tides of the war were turning and then his mother told him oh son you know these are the ways of the war she tried to solace him and she said the least that i can do for you is or with all my mystic power i will glance upon you and when i glance upon you then your body will become imbued with unbreakable strength you know your body will become harder than mountain and nothing will be able to destroy you so all now gandhari had performed asceticism uh, for many years and just the fact that she had covered her eyes not using her power of eyes uh, and apart from that she had done religious vows so by that she had got a lot of power so the senses have power when we use the senses for sense gratification this power gets dissipated and the senses uh, that power is when we regulate the senses then that power is conserved so gandhari by covering her eyes and by doing austerities had got mystic powers and she was planning to invest that in duryodhana's body so she said tomorrow morning come after bathing without any clothes and mm, come to me as you were born and i will glance upon you and i will imbue you with power so the next morning duryodhana went to bathe and normally the dakshatriyas would bathe in the uh, river nearby and they would have some cloth around their body but that day because that's what his mother had told he started coming without any clothes now krishna is a super soul in everyone's heart and he knew what was happening so he immediately he was there and he looked at duryodhana he said what is this you know no decent person walks around without any clothes what has happened to your manners okay uh, okay now uh, krishna was expert and he spoke in such a way that duryodhana felt mortified he was expert at speaking he just looked down at him and started feeling embarrassed and he you know, was moving his hands to cover him then when he said my mother told me to come like this so he said oh, that is okay but he said at least cover your private parts you know you are no baby now Uh, now for a fully grown viral kshatriya to be compared to a baby that is intolerable and he said he said yes and he immediately covered his private parts and he went proceeded then when he came in and told his mother his mother said stand right in front of me and then when she was standing in front of me she uh, he was standing in front of her she removed the blindfold that she had put on her eyes and she glanced at duryodhana and a sudden ray of light which surcharged with tremendous energy shot out through her eyes and it went over all into the body of duryodhana and duryodhana felt himself imbued with some mysterious and empowering vigor and then as dropal as gandhari glanced over his full body and she saw the cloth around his mm, thighs she was dismayed he says what have you done i told you to come without clothes he said that now your whole body will be invulnerable except for your thighs and he says why did you cover your thighs when i had told you to explicitly to specifically to come without any clothes so duryodhana uh, was as confused he was he did not want to anger his mother uh, he was not sure how powerful his mother's uh, glance would be but he felt whatever help he was getting he should take that help so he said that krishna told me to cover at least my private parts so kanthari shook her head in sorrow she said she realized that she had heard from the sages that krishna is god and he knew if krishna was against her then ultimately she could do nothing and she dejected uh, disappointed she decided she had done what she could and she decided to depart back to hastinapur to be by her husband's side when eventually the final fatal news came now duryodhana was also not sure how powerful he would be uh, but uh, he his whole body except for the part of his, around his thighs of his thighs where he covered it with a cloth everything else was uh, invulnerable invincible practically it had made him invincible so uh, now Uh, when the eventually the fight start it, is, uh, it was decided they were going to fight so they decided to go to samant panchak balram ji came over there and 
the specifics of the fight we have discussed uh, when we're talking about Bhima, how they fought fiercely. Both of them were extremely skilled, but uh, whereas Bhima was strong, uh, Duryodhana was skilled, and slowly but surely, all of Duryodhana's attacks, Bhima's attack, Duryodhana was dodging and he was hitting him. And Bhima was angered and occasionally he would get in severe blows. At one point, Duryodhana hit a heavy blow on Bhima. And because to hit that blow, Bhima had come closer, Duryodhana had come closer. Bhima saw that opportunity, endured that blow stoically and then he whirled his mace and hurled it full into the at the side of Duryodhana. It hit him fully and he flew off the ground. I flew off the and fell for several long distance away and he was stunned but he, was, he went into a swoon but in a few moments he got up and when the, he, Duryodhana saw the incredulous look on Bhima's face he says that blow which had been with his full force should, would have broke caused a, caused a mountain to split apart and not, practically nothing had happened to Bhima to Duryodhana so Duryodhana gloated, seeing the inc- incredulous expression on Bhima's face, and he said, "He thought, yes, he says that 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 woman's blessing was really something. He had become invincible, and now Duryodhana had before the war had started. He had told Yudhishthir, he said, you be the referee in our fight because you know how a fair fight is to be fought. So." Mm, Yudhishthir again taunted him and he said, where was your sense of fairness when Abhimanyu knew was killed? But still, we will give you a fair chance. And slowly, Bhima and Duryodhana were fighting. Now, as they were both hitting each other, now Duryodhana was actually not getting hurt at all by Bhima's blows. Whereas Bhima, Duryodhana's blows were hurting Bhima. But Bhima, because of his rage and because of his determination to win this war, he concealed the fact that he was wounded or that he was shaken. But but the Pandavas were anxious. They were getting more and more anxious because over a period of time, although Bhima did not show any pain, but by the repeated blows, Bhima's armor cracked apart. And Balram lauded Duryodhana's skill in maze fighting. And then, uh, as the fight went on, then Duryodhana turned to, uh, then Arjuna towards, turned towards Krishna and he said, who will win? And Krishna told that, there is no way that uh, Bhima can win if he fights by fair means. And he needs to, because of Gandhari's blow also, the whole fa- match had become, uh, mm, it, it was in one sense a sort of rigging of the match. You know, in one sense, if, a, uh, if there is a, say, a cricket match and the batsman and a baller is there, and the ball batsman has got uh, some blessing that way, even if the batsman misses the ball, still the ball will never hit the stumps. That means whatever happens, there is uh, no way the batsman will get out. Uh, now that was, it was practically something like that. No matter what Bhima did, if Duryodhana's body was uh, uh, invincible, then what could Bhima do? So now the only way in such a situation uh, a warrior can proceed is find the chinks in the enemy's armor. So if it had been a fair fight in the sense that the both of them were fighting with their own individual natural strength, then Bhima would have triumphed. But because Gandhari had blessed him, so now the odds had been changed dramatically and it had not been changed um, in an honest way. Now, now we could say that a mother blessing her son is honest. We could say that, but then if the son, is act, son has acted dishonestly throughout his life, and is indeed the personification of Adharma, and by the success of that son, again Adharma will flourish over the world, in the world, then for whatever is required for the sake of Dharma has to be done. So, um, uh, Krishna told, pointed to Arjuna, that, you know, he has to, Bhima has to hit his thighs. And now Bhima had been planning to hit the thighs of Arjuna, uh, Duryodhana, but after defeating in a fair fight, then he was going to break his thighs. So Arjuna pointed to his thighs and Bhima, as they were fighting, uh, Bhima noticed it. And Bhima had also been thinking, how am I going to beat Duryodhana? 
So then, in a move called Avasthana, as Bhima swung his mace, Duryodhana jumped up to evade the blow. And as Duryodhana was coming down, at that time, Bhima swung and hit the blow. So now, normally, that blow would have been at the level of the chest. And that blow would not have been unfair. But in this particular case, when uh, Duryodhana had jumped up and was coming down, so that same blow, uh, which would have been at the level of the chest, was now hit at the level of the thigh. So Madhacharya analyzes how actually that blow was not unfair, in the, or not entirely unfair, in the sense that it was aimed at the level of the chest, not at the level of the thigh. It was not really aimed directly at the thigh, but circumstantially the opponent was at the was in flight, uh, in descent of the flight in such a way that the blow hit him at the level of the uh, thigh. So he in his Tatpar Mahabharata Tatpanana he gives a technical analysis to actually explain how that blow was not unfair. And that one blow which hit Duryodhana on his a uh, vulnerable part. The, it had been invested with our Bhima's forward charge and the full strength of his arms had struck Duryodhana and Duryodhana screamed in pain and he collapsed on the ground. They had, uh, as they heard the sound of his thighs cracking and breaking, all the warriors cheered. They knew that the war was over. Balram was enraged. And then Krishna, he came, he came charging towards Duru, uh, to Bhima. Krishna pass, pacified him, caught him, restrained him, held him in his arms and he said, no, the Pandavas are the sons of our aunt and they are the brothers of our sister. They are the, uh, they are, uh, Arjun, they are also related to our sister. Uh, they are, he says, you know, we, we desire, to, we must do their well-being and moreover they are virtuous and they had to win. And this was the only way I could have won. Uh, and moreover, this had been ordained by Maitreya Rishi also. So therefore, the words of the Rishis have to come true. And what Bhima did was not wrong. Now, what were Maitreya Rishi's words? Actually, Maitreya Rishi, when the Pandavas had gone to the, had been exiled to the forest, Maitreya Rishi had come and he had said to Duryodhana, I'm extremely displeased. He to Dhritarashtra primarily spoke. I am extremely displeased by the way you have dealt with Pandu's sons. They are virtuous and they do not deserve to suffer like this. And he says, tell your son to amend his ways and to make peace with the Pandavas and give their kingdom back. If he does not do so, then destruction will befall the Kuru dynasty. So at that time, Duryodhana had been so insolent, so overconfident and arrogant about his own power that he had smacked his thighs as if to uh, show, I am so strong, what can anyone do? So Maitreya Rushi had become enraged. Fool! The very thighs that you are so proud of, they will be broken in war and they will become the cause of your death. So at that time, Dhritarashtra had begged, please forgive uh, Please forgive Duryodhana. So he had said, if he follows my instructions and makes peace with the Pandavas, then I'll be forgiven. Otherwise, my words will come true. And he had departed in anger. So Krishna reminded this vow. He says, oh, he said that Duryodhana has been killed by due to his own misdeeds. And Balram was not satisfied by Krishna's reasoning, but he accepted Krishna's uh, verdict anyway, and he departed from there. And then, Bhima put kicked uh, Duryodhana, the fallen Duryodhana on the head. Uh, you know, now, this was against Kshatriya etiquette and Bhima was just so angry with him. He wanted to punish him more and more. But then, when he was doing it again, the other warriors checked him. Uh, and now Duryodhana was totally humiliated. And then the Krishna told that, now this person is dead. He's just like a piece of earth. You know, there is no need for us to waste even one moment of time thinking about him. Let us depart from here and let us celebrate our victory. Uh, oh, uh, for Duryodhana to hear these dismissive words were even more intolerable. And he just tried to raise himself on his on the strength of his elbows. He was in mortal pain. He says, Oh, Keshava, how dare you insult me like this? It is only because of an unfair blow that I have been killed. Do you think that I did not notice that it was you who signaled 
uh, it was you who told Partha and Partha signaled to Bhima to use this low blow. If you had fought fairly, then you would never have been able to kill me. And I said that you will be you uh, will be smeared by infamy for the devious way in which you have fought and killed me. So Krishna got angry and he's staring, leveling a steady stare at Duryodhana and he spoke, you know, Oh fool, it is because of your own misdeeds that you have been killed. Indeed, the day you so grievously insulted Draupadi, that very day you should have been killed. The day you dispossess the Pandas in a gambling match. No, that you throughout your life committed atrocities against the Pandavas. And despite it all, I gave you the chance. I came to you and asked for just five villages. And you refused that. You seal your own pact with death. And today you bear the consequences of your misdeeds. And speaking this, Krishna turned away from Duryodhana. Duryodhana, you know, he could not tolerate being bested in a verbal match. Although now he knew he had been bested in the mace match. Earlier also, when Yudhishthira had bested him in a verbal match, that's how it had goaded him to come out of the um, lake in which he had been hiding. Now he said, what do I care for your words? He says, I have lived virtuously, I have given charity, I have performed sacrifice, and I will ascend to heavens, meeting the destination that is got by warriors who have fought honorably. He says, you on the other hand will have to stay on this earth and you will have to live with the earth bereaved of its wealth and bereaved of warriors. The Rajana knew that actually uh, the war had taken a heavy cost on the royal treasury and the Pandavas would face problems. So he was trying to comfort himself and try to somehow twist reality in a way to prove his superiority. Now at this point, suddenly from the heavens, some celestial voices were heard and they said, Duryodhana has been killed unfairly. Indeed, the Kaura, the main Kaurav warriors, Bhishma, Drona, Karana, all were killed unfairly. This was most wrong. And when these, when the celestial voices spoke like this, the Pandavas became anxious and they turned towards Krishna. And Krishna consoled them. He said, you know, these warriors were such that they could not have been killed by any other way. And uh, uh, to for the cause of dharma, if unfair means have to be used, especially against enemies who are themselves deceitful, then that is what is necessary to do. This is indeed the code of morality. O oh, Pandavas, do not grieve. And they were consoled by Krishna's words. And they departed from there. So Madhacharya again explains that the gods played a trick on Duryodhana. Duryodhana had opportunity to repent for his sins. But even at the point of his death, he maintained his self-righteousness. And thus he was tricked away from the opportunity of repenting and uh, begging forgiveness for his misdeeds. Now of course, uh, Ashwatthama Kripa, eventually they came, they had been hiding when the Pandavas were there. But when they, after Pandava warriors departed, they came and Ashwatthama heard that Duryodhana had been killed unfairly. She got angry and he said, I will rid the earth of these Pandavas. Then Duryodhana asked Kripa to get uh, water from the nearby river and then he sanctified him and he said, go ahead and attain victory. And Duryodhana did not have much hope but still seeing uh, Ashwatthama's vigor, he encouraged him. And then, uh, we will discuss when we talk about Ashwatthama how he brutally slaughtered everyone in the, who was sleeping in the Pandava camp. And then when he realized that he had killed the Pandava's sons and not the Pandavas, he was mortified. But he had wanted to please Duryodhana. So he just took the five Pandava's sons' heads and pretended before Duryodhana that these were Duryodhana's, that five Pandavas. Pand when Duryodhana heard that the five Pandavas had been killed, he was delighted. And he, said, he was now, actually at that time, he was lying far away in a forest lake and because his body was almost, uh, motion, he was motionless. So 
you know, uh, wild beasts were around him, and Duryodhana was practically not able to move. Still, by moving his hands and his gestures, he was trying to push the beasts away. So when uh, Kripa Krita Varma Nashwatthama came, they immediately came with their weapons. They drove away the beasts, and Kripa said, "How amazing it is! Uh, indeed, the ways of destiny are inconceivable. That that king." who had ruled the earth has now fallen on the earth and is almost becoming meat for the uh, wild animals indeed nothing in this world is permanent so as uh, kripa was lamenting ashwatthama told the news and duryodhana became jubilant he said bring me the heads and when he brought the heads he used the last bit of his strength and he crushed those heads and those heads crushed to powder as soon as they crushed to powder duryodhana realized Duryodhana said to the Shatama, "Oh, these are not the heads of the Pandavas. They look similar, but those heads could not be crushed, even with all my strength. And yet, in my weakened condition right now, I have easily crushed these heads. They are the sons, the heads of the sons of Pandavas. Oh, Ashwatthama, what have you done? They were the successors who were surviving in our dynasty. Oh, now our dynasty has become has ended. Oh, what have you done?" He started lamenting. His own sons had been killed. His own brothers had been killed. And the Pandava sons were dead. So now again, in the materialistic consciousness, the idea is that I will continue on through my Xerox copies, through my descendants. And when he thought that okay, that nobody in our dynasty is going to continue, he had been proud to be call call himself a Kaurava, a descendant of a Kuru dynasty. In fact, he. He didn't want the Pandavas to be considered Kauravas, but he wanted the Kuru dynasty to continue. And when he was, he was, he saw that the Kuru dynasty was not going to continue. He was devastated and bitter disappointment, lamenting at what Ashwatthama had done. He died. And this is what it represents in this world: a person who seeks materialistic gains, and especially who sacrifices virtue for seeking materialistic gains. That person ultimately ends in misery. So Duryodhana personified envy and greed, and how that combination, even if through some scheming, ethical or unethical, if the person becomes successful, the person is never contented, and that person will ultimately be dissatisfied and devastated. Now, one who thinks that to enjoy success of one's life is to enjoy the displeasure of others. To enjoy the envy in the eyes of others. Today there are advertisements in today's culture saying, "Purchase this car and enjoy the envy in others' eyes." This is this is the Duryodhana standard of enjoyment. So one who thinks that by making others suffer, my superiority and glory will be proved, that person will never be satisfied in life. And Duryodhana demonstrates this truth through his tragic life. Tragic. not because of some evil destiny but tragic because of his own evil choices thank you hare krishna